How's it going everybody? I know I've been slacking quite a bit the past few weeks when it comes to videos, but life gets busy sometimes. I hope I can pick up the pace again in the future, but for today, we got quite a few things to talk about. On last week's Warrior Stem, the devs showed us what is coming in year 8. Our game's getting quite old now, we've been around for a while. But not only us, but also our sponsor today is celebrating their birthday. Viking Jewelry has been a steady partner for this channel for many years and they are currently having a birthday offer as well. They've been around for 6 years now and the whole shop has discounts ranging from 15 up to 30%. So we can do one better and add another 20% with the code FREEZE20. That one is valid for the next 72 hours so better check out their website right after this video so you don't miss out. They've been steadily increasing their portfolio, so nowadays you can't only find jewellery, but also apparel, but even things like armour, drinking horns and much more. A link will be down in the description that automatically applies the code at the checkout. Alright, but back to For Honor then, Year 8. Here is the overall overview of what is to come this year. We have two new heroes and a bunch of new skins. Season 1 that is starting next Thursday will have a new Knight skin. Warden is getting their second skin. It is the Warden from the OG trailer. I personally think the skin looks really solid and they are catering towards that nostalgia with it. So who knows what else they'll be bringing out in the future that tries and hit that mark. I mean it's clearly a hint towards shove on block isn't it? But yeah, for one, what they've also shown is the event game mode. It aligns with that same sentiment that we've seen in the trailer. It's the 1v1v1 with the three original vanguards. So, for the first time, For Honor will have three teams. Without a doubt, this mode will be quite rage inducing as everyone will feel as if they are always the target of the other two. And I can't wait to see the posts of people saying, well, obviously they're targeting me as I am the strongest one in that lobby. It'll be quite some fun and I can see this mode survive quite a bit longer than the usual Dominion alternatives. But we'll see. So yeah, a free for all with three people. The Warden animations we will talk about in the future as I have no idea what else might have changed or if that hype armor flash there means it'll actually release like that or if it's just the team testing it out. Hype armor on the night. We've never had that topic before. But moving on from skins to fashion. Let's do a little bit of story time while I show you the Battle Pass weapons of this upcoming season. During dinner when I was in Montreal in January, I was having a conversation with a certain someone about weapons and armors and all that. It's not uncommon that I'm being told, oh, I watch your videos all the time. I tend to be a little skeptical here as I sometimes say stuff a little too direct for many. Imagine a UI team member telling me they watch my videos. Yeah, right. But when he said, you always skip over the fashion bit and say somebody else has already talked about it. So, so yeah, I was quite happy when I realized, oh, he, he really does watch because that is what I do during these reveal videos. So we're changing that today. I'll give you my feedback about these new weapons and it'll be easy as I think those are looking amazing this time. And you do the same, please. I want to see comments what you enjoy or not enjoy on these new weapons. So I think I'm not talking out of line here when I say that people for the most part, enjoy simple and clean weapons. Simple is obviously a quite broad term and I wouldn't say that these battle pass weapons are simple. They are quite ornamented with lots of faces, particularly on the shields or on Ocelotl's weapon with the jaguar heads. Clean might also not quite fit if you show this to someone that doesn't know how overloaded all the weapons are. Lots of different colors, tons of different gems. This time we have none of this and I absolutely adore it. It's a simple silver color scheme with no gems or another color that acts as a contrast. That's why I indeed would call these simple for what it's worth. You can actually use these without having to match color swatches or material color to the utmost degree. So I'm a huge fan of these this time. One thing I do want to touch on is symmetry though. All the dual wielding heroes tend to always have a slight variation in their weapons. For the future I want to see this idea abandoned from time to time at least. Make the weapons exactly the same. No variation in color, no switching up the top and bottom of the handles, nothing of that. That is the only real critique I can give here. We were so close on Nusha, but at the end we still see a slight shift in the grey and silver. 
Oh, and for the future, go even simpler. Take the basic weapons and just clean them up. Remove the scratches, remove the blemishes, or in general that battle-worn look. I'd bet that ton of people would use these, but like I said, you guys let me know in the comments. But that's it for the fashion, let's move on to the patch notes. They aren't as extensive this time, but two of the previously tested reworks are making their way to life. Magi and Peacekeeper that is. No Highlander, not that I'm keeping my hopes up here. So yeah, let's talk Magi. I don't really need to explain much since JC is getting better and better at presenting these changes and making it very clear how these changes impact your gameplay, but I'll try and add a few things as well. So for Magi, the long-awaited in-chain switch of the two stances with the zone attack. Everybody who played the TG knows how great this felt. There was zero doubt in anyone's mind that this isn't coming. Great change, but it also allows for one particular thing. Magi can now set up his own ganks by bashing and zone attacking, and then going straight into the staff mode grab. If a teammate times the heavy well, the grab will be confirmed. It's a better bash punish and a sort of self-peel in the middle of teamfights now. Furthermore, there have been changes to the staff mode. These are nerves to the character. The staff mode chain lights are losing the hype armor. This makes it harder in teamfights to just press buttons and continue your infinite chain. You can now hit them out of those chains if they predictably just keep chaining heavy into lights. Then for the axe light finishes. Chasey explained it extensively why they chose the lights and not the heavies to be undodgeable. I personally still disagree with this, but he made his point. The axe light finishes right now, well they aren't great. It's a 500ms light with no extra properties, no insane damage, no insane hitbox, and while it's a finisher, meaning you get GB'd with enemies around. So fair point, these could be buffed. But the in-chain heavies, well they are in a similar boat. They are dodgeable on the same timing as the bash, they don't have a good hitbox, and they have average damage. Overall, undodgeable chain heavies would have made the character stronger than undodgeable light finishes. Chasey regarding them as too strong and allowing for a strong mix-up, well that is a sound stance here. I still would have preferred to have the blue heavies. All in all, I'd say Magi is weaker after the patch compared to now. He's not weak, don't get me wrong, but he will most likely be much more fun to play. Finding a solid middle ground between fun and efficiency can be quite hard. Remember this when I'll talk about my dear Lawbringer fans in a future video. But yeah, that's it for Magi. Next is the Peacekeeper rework. One, Dagger Council is now 366ms, which means 33ms faster. In conjunction, the parry window has been shrunk down to 166ms. And that is a first. We've had decreased parry windows because of hits done in the past, but we've now had the deliberate choice of making this window smaller to begin with. These changes together will make Dagger Council unreactable to absolutely everybody. Not even our favorite legume will stare you down and parry it on reaction. This now opens up the discussion about implementing this for other moves as well. What we need to pay attention here is hit stop. If in-chain moves suddenly get a lowered parry window, we might be looking at unparryable moves. Less of an issue on blockable attacks, but once we factor in chain unblockables, particularly faster ones, we might be facing problems. We'd also need new UI elements showing that a move is unparryable. Go to work UI team, get cooking. But I do hope the team keeps experimenting here. This would be a valuable change, particularly for dual players at the very top of the skill bracket. This would even the playing field to a certain degree and gives the potential for many more viable picks. More of that another time, let's move on with PK. The deflect input is back on the light button. I've said this multiple times in the past and made a few videos about it, so it shouldn't come as a surprise that I do love this change. Every single deflect input needs to be different than the dodge attack. What other changes are needed for deflects? Go and watch my old video here. Random dodge attack spamming and being rewarded with the deflect is a nonsense and needs to go. Then the zone attack, deep gouge and guard break stab changes, well they're kinda of whatever. If people need an easier input, then why not? We are not a PvE game that prides itself on clunky inputs and then calls it skill. 
hitboxes though. Trajectories on side heavy openers and finishes, well those have been increased. PK never had bad hitboxes. If anybody claims that, smack them over the head. But chain lights in particular, they have insane reach. So we'll see how much better these heavies are now. Not sure she needed those, but let's hope they won't be egregiously large. And sadly, that's it for the patch notes already. Well, it's two reworks. Many people had hoped for more, but let's wait and see. Maybe we're in for a surprise when we see the actual patch notes next week. Our next big topic are the testing grounds. We are getting a Gankin TG. I've seen it said quite a few times that these will only really affect the 100 to 0 ganks. Let me give you my spin on this. These changes do target these 100 to 0 ganks, definitely. But saying that normal gameplay isn't affected, well that is a bit false. With these changes a lot more revenge will be fed, I'll explain in just a second. But please do not think this doesn't affect you just because you play in an MMR bracket where coordinated ganking doesn't happen. JC explained how hitstun works quite in depth. We have three stages. First hitstun, second and third. The third then resetting you back to neutral immediately. First hitstun is full damage, second has a 25 damage reduction and third has a 75 damage reduction. Many people that think they are being ganked just cycle through these really without realizing when they escape was possible. Hit stun resets in the form of pins are used to go back to first hit stun without damage reduction and locking people into these ganks. Not many people know which moves do pin and have this option. Some are quite obvious, others not so much. But since people randomly spam moves into their opponents, they more often than not don't even realize that they are indeed resetting the hit stun. Now, the changes we will be seeing are to these resets for the most part. You cannot reset with pins anymore, meaning you will always cycle through all the hit stuns and then damage reduction will carry over to the next move. Even when you grabbed by a Magi or a Goki or skewered by a Gladiator, whatever really, resetting through hit stuns will be gone. So why did I say that revenge feeding will increase? Well, quite simple actually, because Revenge does not care about the damage reduction. If you get hit by a move that does 20 damage, it will always feed 20 Revenge. The game doesn't care whether it's damage reduced by 25 or 75 or whatever else value. It's always 20 Revenge. With the damage reduction occurring more often now, because resetting is not possible anymore, you will do less damage more often, but still feed full Revenge. So all the randoms that just press buttons will be an even bigger menace. Enjoy your solo queue experience. Now in the testing grounds we have a limited selection of heroes. They are currently on the screen and not every one of these is necessarily a culprit when it comes to ganking. Similarly if the hero isn't on the list, now well, that doesn't mean they aren't a big culprit. Looking at you Orochi. During the testing ground you are limited to the displayed roster. So keep that in mind. One thing I need to mention here is that block stun ganks like infinite magi grab will be a little weird. Because when you block the light that will confirm the grab, you do not gain damage reduction. But if you get hit by the light, you do get the benefit of these new changes. Since this is a little contradictory at first, I will explain more in detail when we get our hands on this. Overall, I think this TG is amazing and I want it implemented straight away to be honest. I've yet to hear a solid argument against these proposed changes. So let's wrap things up. Sadly, they haven't shown the new reworked Cathedral map yet. Only some small glimpses in the trailer, but that one is coming mid-season anyways. I'm very much looking forward to that one. So you let me know what had you excited the most. Don't forget to check out our sponsor and all the other stuff I'll be linking down in the description. For now. I hope the video was helpful, thanks for watching, laters everybody.